Does your end up to SSD run a bit too hot or you want to give it a bit of extra bling? And this is where this comes in from Xylance. On the front of the box, it doesn't exactly say what it is. It does give you the model number M2SSD.B.ARGB. But the basics is a M.2 cooler, which cools down an NVMe or a SATA based M.2 SSD. And it's got some nice RGB lighting on it. The back of the box shows you the dimensions of the heat sink as well as the length of the cable. And it also shows that it is a daisy chain. When I say cable, it is a three pin ARGB cable. So your motherboard needs to have a header on the motherboard for a five volt three pin ARGB cable. That's the one with three pins on it, but it's basically two pins, misses one and then has one. Inside the box, you've got some foam to protect it. You've got the heat sink itself with the cable, which is attached. You've got two thermal paste pads there. You've also got the bracket, four screws inside a plastic bag, as well as a screwdriver, which is always handy. Okay, so what we're going to do is obviously build this up and show you how it's done. We're going to be testing it with this Lexar SSD. It's the NM800, and this thing goes up to 7,000 megabytes per second. So it's what's called a PCI Express Gen 4x4 SSD, and they can get very hot. And we're going to do some testing with it obviously with the heatsink and without the heatsink to see if it makes any real difference and then we'll also see if it actually makes any difference with the speed as well so right so what you have to do is you get the back plate you get one piece of one piece of this thermal paste here or thermal pads or paste pads or whatever you want to call them and you have to take off the little bits of plastic which are always a bit of a pain here's me fiddling there you go and then you get your ssd and place it on there so you may have to adjust it forward and backward to depending on how it fits once you've done that you get another piece of this thermal pad or paste or whatever you want to call it someone's going to tell me off whatever i call it so and then you've got to peel the plastic off yet again and if i can come on there we go and then what you do is get the main part of the heat sink, which is here, and position that over the top. Obviously, you make sure you get the orientation correct, otherwise it's going to be upside down in, on your actual motherboard, and we'll show you that in a few seconds. So I'm going to just press that down slightly to make sure all the pads and everything stick in. And then you've got these four little screws, which you just screw into the side here. with the provided screwdriver it's not the best screwdriver in the world in all honesty but it's better than nothing because not everyone has one so small available okay now we finally screwed it in what you do is get your motherboard again this is a demonstration board this isn't the board we're going to actually be using it in you would then put it in your m.2 slot here so just slide it in then put a screw in the other end and then get your rgb cable or ARGB cable, should we say, and this is a 5 volt one, and then you plug that into the 5 volt ARGB header on your motherboard. Okay, so down to testing. The testing was done on the same machine. The SSD was installed in an open slot towards the bottom of the motherboard, so the graphics card wouldn't interfere with the testing. So just bear in mind, depending on your airflow and position in your case, temperatures may vary. But saying that, as you can see here, with no heat sink, the maximum temperature got up to 53 degrees Celsius. And with the heat sink, it dropped by 15 degrees Celsius down to 38 degrees and even the average temperature instead of 49 we we're getting 35 so it's a 14 degree difference as well so as you can see there you are actually getting a lot better cooling performance in there so it should allow the actual device to last longer and potentially perform a little bit better performance wise we didn't actually see any difference between either of the results but just remember obviously if you keep your SSD cooler, and that goes for pretty much any device, the longer it should last. Now, some things to bear in mind before you go out and purchase this is where you're going to position it in your case. So, for example, if your SSD slot is underneath your graphics card, you're not going to see all the pretty RGB lighting, which, well, you may be not bothered by that or whatever, but that's up to you. So make sure you position it right. Also, depending on where you position it, you may get less airflow to it, which can affect the temperatures as well. So just bear that in mind.
and then on top of that just bear in mind you need to get the cable going from the actual ssd all the way to your argb controller or socket on your motherboard but saying that it was a very good performance it cooled down our ssd by 15 degrees celsius which should hopefully make it last a little bit longer if you're interested in really fast ssds why not watch this video up here where we actually review the nm800 which achieves speeds of over 7400 megabytes per second or you could watch this video over here where we put two of them together and raid them and they achieve speeds of 14,000 megabytes per second. Otherwise, make sure you like and subscribe.